as you'll know, uh, if you listened to last week's episode, uh, I was in Germany and Switzerland last week. And we were in Switzerland to go and see Ed Sheeran. Stayed in a hotel in Switzerland. Uh, saw Ed, packed up the next morning, left Switzerland, jumped on the train to Germany, got back to the UK on Saturday. So like a week ago, right? Um, and I kind of just put my bag, which I bring back with me to Wales, which was my hand luggage from the flight. I just kind of stuck it in the corner of my bedroom, right? I took my laptop out, took the bits out I needed, stuck the bag over there. And I thought I'll deal with that. I'll pack it back up again. Cause obviously I removed a lot from the bag because I was about to get on a flight. I'll deal with that when I go back to Wales. And so <laughs> there I was this afternoon dealing with that packing the bag, sorting everything out. And I have this little mental checklist that I go through before I leave uh, Corby or before I leave Wales, where I just make sure I have all the stuff I need, right? Laptop charger, Apple Watch charger, phone charger, earphones, keys, wallet, all of this like basic stuff, right? And it struck me just as I was um, about to leave the house, right? Because normally these days I wear an Apple Watch um, and it's just, it stays on me at all times. Um, I don't wear like the G-Shocks that I bought. I don't really wear any other watches. Um, but it struck me that I hadn't seen the watch that I wear every now and then <laughs> for a little while. And I thought, oh, that's unusual. So I looked around my room and I thought, no, actually, I don't remember taking out of the bag because all I took out of the bag when I got back to the UK was the laptop and that's plugged in over there and the bag's just been sat in the corner. So I kind of looked around in the corner. There's not much there because I've just moved into this house. It's a fairly empty bedroom, right? There's no clutter or mess. So I could see quite clearly that the watch wasn't there. Um, so I checked in the bag, like all the little side compartments and stuff. And I thought, right, <laughs> it's two and a half grand watch isn't there. Can't find it. So I, um, I tried to retrace where it last was. And I know of absolute certain that it was on my wrist on the Friday night as I walked into the hotel from um, Ed, right? And I also know for a fact that if it wasn't in my bag, it didn't leave that hotel. So I'm like, shit, okay. Somehow, six days ago, I left this fairly expensive watch in a hotel in Switzerland. <laughs> I'm going to assume it's not there. Um, but nonetheless, I phoned the hotel and they went through their normal process. They checked the notes on the room for that stay. They checked the little lost property drawer and stuff. And sure enough, as it happens, the, the watch that was very much left in that room didn't make it out of that room reported. And I assume that somebody who works in housekeeping in that hotel has just had a nice bonus, right? And there's a reason I tell you this, other than the fact that it's just a funny story that I've managed to spend six days not realizing that I'd lost the watch because I don't wear it that much these days anyway. But I think what was most interesting about that is I talk a lot in this podcast about detaching your sense of meaning or self-worth or place in this world from valuables from possessions, right? I talk about the fact that if you build your personality, if you build who you are as a person, if you build what you can offer this world around the stuff you own, that's a really terrible way to live for a bunch of reasons that I won't go into. You can just scroll and listen to basically any other episode and you'll find my reasons for that. But secondly, I speak a lot about this idea of stoicism. I've been listening a lot recently to Ryan Holiday's podcast, The Daily Stoic, and trying to just understand more of these stoic mindsets because they are sprawling and there's lots to learn and it's, it's easier said than done to implement these ideas into your life because they challenge you but the one that has always stuck with me ever since I read Darren Brown's book Happy is this idea that there are only two things that you can control in this life and those two things are your thoughts and your actions right and so to allow your uh, your internal emotions or how you feel or how you perceive the world to be guided by anything external, anything you can't control, anything which isn't your thoughts or your actions is a terrible idea, right? So there's these two things. The idea that I think building your personality around possessions is bad. And this idea that allowing things outside of your control to upset you is bad, right? And it's easy. It's so easy for me to sit on here and say this stuff, right? And not live it. But <laughs> the, the, the losing of the watch, the realizing that this expensive possession which holds a slight personal significance as well right it was essentially on my wrist every day for like three and a half four years since i bought it like it's it's traveled through life with me it's been in every meeting it's been on every date it's been in every awkward situation it has 
Uh, like my dad, when he lived at home, he was the one who brought it up when it arrived in the post and brought it up to me and he like tried it on his wrist. Like it does have some um, sentimental significance, but ultimately it's just a fucking expensive possession, right? Which adds nothing to me as a person and which adds nothing to the world. And so weirdly, it was reassuring as almost like a, a test of how far I've come down this path of actually sticking to the things I say. When I realized it wasn't in the bag and uh, I text Chloe and I'm like, do you remember what our hotel room number was? And she's like, why? And I explained. And literally my text, I explained what I'd lost. And I was like, oh, well, that was literally the words I said. I'm like, oh, well. And then I phoned the hotel and they're like, yeah, we don't have it. And I'm like, okay, no problem. Have a good day. And um, it's weird. I'm not sure if it'll, it'll annoy me more as I try and retrace my steps and work out where on earth in the room it could be or something. But ultimately, it's it's just assuring that despite <laughs> despite the two and a half thousand pound accident, of seemingly leaving this watch in a hotel room. Um, the experience of losing it has validated that actually I didn't care to have it that much anyway, um, which is almost in itself a value shift, right? The fact that I spent that money on a watch a few years ago told me that at that point in time, my values aligned more closely with the idea of buying expensive possessions. Whereas, I mean, even look at the fact that it took me six days to realize that it wasn't there because this green Apple watch, which is like, two and a half years old and is like the basic model anyway, because this is the thing that's been on my wrist that whole time, because I haven't had a, a wanting to wear the expensive thing for six days. It took me that long to even realize that it wasn't there, but then also just to know that I kind of felt okay when it wasn't there, that I have no sudden urge to go out and buy another watch or buy another expensive possession. Um, just an interesting, a really unexpected lesson from something that at least from the outside looking in, would have theoretically annoyed me, but didn't. So there's that.